Hi guys, today we are going to have a deep dive under the surface of one of the most popular Oasis songs of the 90s, some might say. Using the Super Audio CD and the individual tracks that were released for the video game Rock Band, we are going to break down and analyse what ingredients went into creating the massive monumental sound of some might say and we're also going to try and establish through research or guesswork who specifically played what. Some might say was recorded by Oasis in Loco Studios in Wales in February of 1995 and here's a picture of Noel at those sessions. A lot of people believe this was recorded at the Maison Rouge studios in Fulham, where Blur also recorded, but actually just the demo version of Some Might Say was recorded there, which was included on the Japanese pressing of the single. Some Might Say was Oasis's first number one single in the UK, knocking Take That off the number one position in the charts. It was also the last recording to feature original drummer Tony McCarroll, who was shortly afterwards replaced by Alan White. On the first performance of Some Might Say on Top of the Pops, Tony McCarroll can be seen playing it, and on the second, he's been replaced by Alan White. The version of Some Might Say that was released as a single, and is on Morning Glory, was actually the second attempt by the band to record the song. The first one was unfortunately played with tempo issues, where Tony McCarroll had a quite noticeable speed up at the beginning of the first chorus, and where the overall tempo just wasn't right. So they got the whole band back in the studio and told them that they were doing it again. As it turned out, the band nailed it in one take, Noel and Owen were completely happy with it, and ironically, it was actually faster than the first recording. So, track one, on the drums, making his final appearance with Oasis, it's Tony McCarroll. Secondly, we have one of the most signature Oasis instruments, in the studio at least, a tambourine. Now, this could be being played by Tony McCarroll, this could be being played by Liam Gallagher, but I think realistically it's probably Tony. Track three, we have hand claps. Now when you listen to this, it sounds like the whole band. It sounds like all five of them stood around a microphone in the studio. I'm tempted to think that's probably what it was because some might say was approached in an almost live way. They didn't tend to go in for very heavy production on this particular song. This wasn't a complicated mix like they did for many of the songs at Rockfield for the Morning Glory sessions. This was just showing up at Loco Studios and laying down something that was very close to their live sound. So I'm going to say track three, hand claps, the whole band. Track four is bass guitar. Now I'm tempted to say this is Noel, because in the Definitely Maybe era he did record almost all of the bass lines in the studio. And there are several from the Morning Glory era that he has explicitly said he played bass on. And when you listen to those bass tracks in isolation and then compare them to the playing style of the track on Some Might Say, to me, this is very clearly Noel playing. However, we don't have it 100%. There's no interview giving any specifics on that. So I'm going to say probably Noel, maybe Quigsy. Next up, track five, rhythm guitar. Now this to me sounds like Bonehead because I've heard the way Noel strums this song from the demo. And this is a slightly different strum pan. So I'm gonna say, because of the differences in playing style and the much more bar chord heavy, punky approach to the chord sequence, this is probably Bonehead.
And if we listen to track six, we have almost the same strum pattern with a slightly different tone. It's possible that this was Bonehead's double track of his rhythm part, but perhaps with increased gain or with an alternative pickup selection on his guitar. So for track six, because it's very similar in the pattern to track five, I'm gonna say this is Bonehead's double track of his rhythm guitar part. For track seven, we come to a much heavier setting, a much crunchier, dirtier, almost grungier guitar sound, which is just playing the chords for the chorus. I'm tempted to believe that this is Bonehead's part because on another track we have Noel doing what he often did, which was just playing the root notes of the chords down on the low E and A string. So I think because of the live ethos of this song, this is Bonehead's third and final rhythm guitar track on Some Might Say. Now on to track eight. Here we have Noel's first rhythm guitar track. So we're now up to four rhythm guitar tracks. So that's partly why the song sounds so absolutely massive. There's at least four rhythm guitar parts on there, all just playing the chords, all beefing out the sound. This one sounds like Noel Gallagher, it's on his stem and also it's got his tone. The, the playing has a bit more clarity to it and a bit less of a punk sensibility about it, it's a bit more refined so I'm tempted to say this is Noel Gallagher's first rhythm track. Then for track nine, we come on to one of the really key elements of the Oasis sound from these early years, which is they would have these many really loud, really heavy, distorted electric guitars, and then, as if to flesh out and add color to the mix, Noel would add a clean or very mild crunch picking part that would be buried right down in the mix but just served to add a little bit of twinkle to the big beefy sound. So here we have a clean picking part from Noel. And for track 10 we have a double up of Noel's rhythm guitar, much heavier than his normal sound, but sounds very like Noel's playing to me. So I'm gonna say that is Noel's second rhythm guitar track and the fifth overall. Track 11, here we have this bizarre sound effect that I've no idea what it's meant to be, but it was plainly put in by Owen Morris. Owen Morris had access to all kinds of interesting sound effects. You can hear helicopters at the beginning of Morning Glory. You can hear all kinds of interesting sound effects in Champagne Supernova, for example. So here we have what sounds to me just like a, a sound effect that Owen Morris has picked out to just break up the sound and add a little bit of interest, a little bit of dynamic difference when they go into the link between the first chorus and a solo. Track 12, we have Noel's solos. It's easily recognizable as Noel's playing, Noel's tone, and you can also see him playing this part live, so we know this is Noel. Track 13, in true Noel style, he builds up lots and lots of overlapping guitar parts and here we have him playing 
high unison bends and they're buried in the mix just to add a bit of a dynamic lift towards the end of the song. So if you have a listen you can hear just at the end Noel's unison bends for his second lead guitar track. For track 14 we have the third and I think final lead guitar track which is backwards unison bends that are being played over the top of the, the mad sound effect that Owen Morris put over that little link section. You can hear backwards unison bends and I think that's a separate track because these were recorded on tape so it would have had to be a separate track. Number 15, the unmistakable Mr. Liam Gallagher on lead vocals. Some might say that sunshine follows thunder. For track 16, it's Noel on backing vocals doing his harmony parts. Go and tell it to the man who cannot And for track 17, we have a second backing vocal part from Noel. You can hear both parts overlapping and working to build a texture behind Liam's lead vocal. You know what some might say. 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 So that's it. 17 tracks is all I could hear in this mix, but what have I missed? On the last two videos that I did about deep diving into the mix of an Oasis song, I missed on both times at least two tracks. So let me know if you can hear something that I've missed. Stick it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.